to the month of sun. Honey <laughs> girl. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about this. We're going over the month of sun. I'm actually not going to talk about Pentecost because we just did it. We just had it. We experienced it, and then they're going to do a recap. So although it's in the month of Sivan, we all know this. I'm going to go over Zebulon and some other things a lot more detail. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now next one. I'm just going to go over the bullet points. So most everyone has this book, yes? So I don't know if you're like me when you go through this. I went through this and I just thought this was going to just give it to me. Like I was just going to go through this and I would just have it all. But it's really kind of, the whole thing is kind of bullet points to me. So I wanted to know why, why, why the stones, why the three, why the, you know. So, yeah, Phil, you were late. Um, so I didn't really, on the color in the stone, I didn't get that into that. It's clear quartz, white moonstone, that I didn't go that far into, but um, it is the third month, and so the three has significance in it for a few different reasons. Um, obviously, it's the third month. Um, Moses, who, you know, gave the Torah, um, he was a third child, and there was a three-day process of receiving the Torah, so the Jews went through a process before they actually received um, on Pentecost, and so that was a three-day process. And then, <coughs> excuse me, the Jews were divided up into three groups, and I will probably say these wrong, but Kohanim, Kohanim? Oh, yeah, I believe right. that's And then the rest of Israel. So, um, the three also is the number of completion, permanence, and truth. So we'll go through that a little bit more later. A lot of this ties back into Zebulun. So again, once I get kind of through these bullet points, then we'll go back to Zebulun because that's just my favorite part of this and that's just the bulk of it. And so we'll go into that and it'll be a little more exciting than me just going through these little bullet points. Um, on the constellation, it's Gemini, which is the twins, which the most significant part of that is the two tablets that were given on Mount Sinai. Um, then there's also Jacob and Esau, which with that I find interesting because they are twins, but they, there's a good and an evil, there's, which is kind of representative of us, you know, we have that fighting each other in us, so, um, and then, this is my favorite one, was Moses and Aaron was what came up a lot in this as well. Not necessarily twins, but they were brothers and they worked together in a sense. Moses was the lawgiver, so he's the one who transmitted the commandments um, that taught us where lines need to be drawn to reach that truth. And then Aaron was, all I read about him was really more that he approached the Jews with love. So you can see that working together and how that intertwines with the truth and the law and love. And how that gets us where we need to be a little bit easier. So, um, then it also represents how we become twins with God when we receive the path to draw closer to him, which is the Torah, which is the law, which is the commandments. So, um, on the alphabet, Zion, that is the seventh letter, which I guess I should have had, probably had a picture of what that looks like, but it's the seventh letter, which seven means spiritual perfection. And it's a crown of Vav. So this is really interesting because we had the Vav last month, which is the connector, which Issachar and Zebulun were really tightly connected. And we'll get into that some later. But it's the crowned Vav. So it represents, you know, the Vav was a rep as a connector, which is, you know, basically man is the connector between heaven and earth. So then you crown the Bob, and the crowned man is Jesus. So I just thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, it also means weapon or sword. So then when you add that to Jesus, you have the, the crowned man, the king of the Jews, and you equip him with the sword of the Holy Spirit. And it just brings us where we are now. That's awesome. 
the characteristics, some of the characteristics of Sivan, um, the month of giving, and again, the, the biggest one that comes wow. to mind is <laughs> the, month of giving. For the month of giving, of course. <laughs> Um, the Torah was given to us, um, but then also we'll see again when we get into Zebulon that they have a lot to do with giving as well. So that's the why behind it's the month of giving. Um, receiving your boundaries, again, we'll go over that in more detail with Zebulon, but um, that's one of the characteristics. <laughs> the month to be merciful. <laughs> Or having to be so merciful with me. So giving and boundaries <laughs> got a thing. We need to pay attention to that. <laughs> well, that's mostly what we're going to talk about a little bit later. So. <laughs> um, the month to be merciful. So this I found. Okay, so we'll go back to a little bit to um, last month with Issachar. Is that? Yeah. And so that was timing. So feeling recently that I was having the ability to be a little more merciful with the situation with my husband, <laughs> that I tend to have very little mercy in. And, and so I thought, oh, this is cool, you know. I mean, I'm finally actually, well, it's kind of a combination of things. It's that this, you know, there's a special anointing for mercy in this month, but then there's also a walking it out. So we'll go over that a little bit later too, but I, it was like those two came together and I've been saying, I need to stop doing that. I need to stop saying that. I need to stop reacting that way. I need to do this differently instead. And, and then I actually started doing it and, and the results are just amazing. <laughs> you know, when you stop trying to just control and <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> So it's just been really awesome because I was like, why does this seem so easy all of a sudden? And then, you know, it hits, you know, it was just like a day or two into Savan. And anyway, so we'll go over some of that more later. But um, it's also the month for alignment. So like I said earlier, Zebulon and Iskar, we'll go over that some, but they are very tightly aligned and that's very important in how this all moves together these last few months we've been together um, they're all linked together pretty closely so um, and then Moses Miriam and Aaron um, are all aligned um, like I said just a minute ago it's a month to connect your talk with your walk so again in the first month we're declaring and decreeing things we're talking it out we're we're talking about what we're going to do we're decreeing it and then we're waiting in the second month for the timing um, And for my case, I thought, you know, I'm a walker. Like, I'm not just physically, but but I'm like, okay, let's, we want to do something, let's do it. Let's, you know, so I hear something, and I just want to go on it. And, and in this, God was telling me what I had to do was nothing, <laughs> was to stop talking or stop trying to do something and just wait. So Yeah, that's good. Um, and then also, there's, in each festival, there's a specific focus for book of the Bible. So in this month and for um, Pentecost, it's the book of Ruth. So it was about her leaving familiar and physical comfort to seek spiritual, deeper spiritual truth. Um, and she was walking it out and she was following her and she was doing it. She was, so yeah. that lines up really well. So And the alignment between Naomi and Ruth. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, so it goes with the alignment as well. Okay, so now we'll talk about Zebulun. <clears throat> okay, so these guys are super cool. Yeah, they are. They're like my people. <laughs> my people. My people. I feel like they're my people. They are not really my people, but um, so their name means habitation and to dwell. So that obviously makes pretty well sense in this month that the Holy Spirit dwells in us. We we got the infilling of the Holy Spirit with Pentecost. So now instead of it just having you know back then it was just it would just come on you and then you could leave and that's when we actually got it in us so it's, he's always with us 
but there's a special anointing this month to just really focus on that, pay attention to that, just because there's just a special anointing with the hearing um, the Holy Spirit. So, um, oh, okay. I was like, what is it? Trying to figure out my notes. Um, so, Zebulon was the, oh, I didn't write this down. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm the sixth son of her. <laughs> sixth son of her. Yeah. Well, Jacob, it was one of, one of two. Sixth son of mom. <laughs> 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 Why didn't I write that down? What was his wife's name? His <coughs> wife was, well, it would have either been, um, it's Leah. Leah. Okay. <laughs> this is, you know, I need to do some editing. Sixth son of Leah and the tenth of Jacob. So six means Bob. So we talked about that. The connecting power, number of man. So we're the connector. And 10, I found really interesting, it's yod, which is shaped like an arm or a hand. Um, and it also means divine point of energy. So, and then I was listening to this message and she's talking about this letter and she's saying that it's also representative of humility because it was the smallest letter. Mm. And I, so anyway, so she put it all together and said in, in humility, we can reach out and grab divine energy and bring it in or bob it to earth. Mm -hmm. So when you put all of that together, that, you know, so in one sense he was the sixth son, and the other sense he was the tenth, so you put that all together because it's all in him. Put that all together and you see how that can come together. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and again, then we can see completion in this month, so we can just bring it all together. And yeah, that's good. So Jacob and Moses both had prophecies over Zebulun. Um, in Genesis 49 13, Jacob prophesied that Zebulun would dwell at the seashore, um, which isn't exactly what they did. You know, I think most people thought that would mean that they would just be, you know, on the sea and trading and doing their business on the sea. And that's not what happened. But what did happen is that they set trade routes throughout their land. And then this is where the expanding boundaries come in. They just started expanding, they started growing, and then it went from sea to sea. So they did end up on the seashores, but it's not the way that it was originally put in text or what people thought it meant. It was that they were just, they just kept going because they just, they prospered and they just grew their area, grew their territory and just expanded. So they ended up, you know, going from sea to sea. And Deuteronomy 33, 18 um, through 19, Moses said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and Issachar in your tents. They shall call people to their mountain. There they offer right sacrifices, for they draw from the abundance of the seas and the hidden treasures of the sand. So in that, there's a couple of things there that goes to that alignment with Zebulun and Issachar. Mm -hmm. So... Zebulun was going out and doing the work and raising money so that his car could study. And, and I relate to that because there's so many times that I'm, I'm like, well, I don't have that gift or I don't have that. But this just shows you can do something to support the people that might be doing that specific thing. So you might not have that thing, but you can still give something. And then God spoke me, to me today about it on the other side of it. You might need to receive some of that. You know, there's so many times that I'll just be like, oh, no, I can do it. You know, I'll just be on a task or be in something and, oh, no, I can just do it. But you don't know what blessing you're missing out on by allowing that person to come in and help to sow their seed into you because you might not really fully understand what they have. You might not physically need their hand in what you're doing, but how are they blessing? How are they bringing something that they have that you don't have into what you're doing? And I'm so guilty of that. Just, you know, I've got it covered. I know what I have to do here and just doing it myself. So, um, um, so because they went out 
and they were able to really produce, um, they were extravagant givers. So they, again, we see them giving to Iskar so that Iskar could do what Iskar was called to do, what they were made to do, um, which was study the Torah. And then they also heard from God, so they would hear, they would hear these secrets from God. They would get the timing of something and share that information with Zebulun. And that, I'm sure, helps Zebulun be successful as well. It wasn't just in them. They didn't just, you know, it wasn't just on their own or on their own um, mindset or ideas. It was all, it was a joint effort. It was their alignment, and they were working in that together. But so they were giving to each other in that sense, and so because of that, um, it is a month of giving. So um, I would say, I would suggest that, you know, we all do the first fruits, but, you know, seek God and see if there's maybe a little more he wants you to give this month, because it is the month of giving. So, of course, he, you know, every month we tithe and we do our first fruits, but like I said, there's just a special anointing on the giving this month, so whether that be your first fruits offering your tithe or just giving extra to whatever it is God put it in your heart as your gift to give to others just pray on that and see if that's something that you need to do and um, they taught others to give with a good heart they they also taught them that being wealthy was good and it was right and it was godly you know they all of these tribes had been in captivity slaves for hundreds of years so with that is a poverty mindset and not just in the money sense but you can just develop this poverty sense of that you just don't deserve anything whether that be a happy life or joy or um, to be loved you know you can you can feel impoverished in so many different ways but um, they were just teaching them that you know it's okay this is what he wants for us he wants us to be blessed to be a blessing. He wants us to have increase, and um, so in their example of doing so, because they did it humbly, um, they were teaching others to come out of that, trying to pull them out of that poverty. Can I interrupt you? Yep. Okay, so um, I want to I do the Chipotle thing. Oh, right okay. Here. Yep. Okay, so here's, here's an example, <coughs> and this is, you guys are just going to have to follow this. Um, Will you tell the story first, and then I'll, I'll... Okay, so on Saturday for Pentecost, my job, my one job was to get food. My one job, <laughs> my one was, job to was to one get job. food for the worship team. So I got their order, figured out everything, ordered it online, got confirmation, two separate confirmation emails that they had my order, and the time that I was going to pick it up, I was a little bit late picking it up, so I thought for sure it would be ready. And it wasn't. They hadn't even started it. They had the order, but they hadn't worked on it at all. So I I have a stress moment where, <laughs> am I going to have time? Do I need to just go grab some pizza? I mean, these guys are going to have to, like, stop their practice, eat really quick, and then get back out here. And so I was really concerned that I wasn't going to have time. So I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, but they said they would have it ready for us really quickly and that they would give it to us for free. Yeah, so... That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Um, because this is this is the month of wealth, right? This is the month of trade. This is the month of giving, and here we are, a blessed people. I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. Okay, so, and through you, all of the nations will be blessed. Now, I'm not saying that you know Chipotle is a cursed people. Don't don't hear what I'm not saying. But what I am saying is it's really interesting how the Lord will um, set up... Okay, did you guys... I posted this thing on Facebook today about God's the sneakiest person. Yeah, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can't wait to see, you know... Anyway. But here's the thing is when... <laughs> Shonda and I were talking about this situation that happened in Messina. First of all, the worship team wasn't ready. They weren't ready to eat anyway, if you would have been here on right. time. They weren't ready after, I guess. Yeah. Right, exactly. And the Lord wanted to, it's almost like he was doing some sort of redemption in Chipotle. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? Yeah. He, 
they, he, he, it was like he set it up to cause Chipotle to bless Awake and Breakthrough and to bless the worship team. Isn't that interesting? Now, we could come on, you know, Messina could, like, flex her muscle because she's got some. And, and, and be like, look here, we're going to do this for free, da-da-da-da-da. But really, she just needs to place a demand on it because they said to you. <coughs> yeah, they didn't, I didn't ask for anything. I just, I was a little frazzled and flustered, course, but yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't get mad at them because it is what it is. And there were other people with orders that didn't have them ready. They weren't big catering orders, but they did have orders that weren't ready. But they just said, we're just going to, I'm going to call customer service and I'm going to free that out for you, I think is how he worded it. And I was like, oh, okay, can you give me some extra chips? <laughs> <laughs> you, you did not leave any money on the table now, did you? But, but, <laughs> but here's the thing, here's the thing that I want you guys to like really pull out of this example is that, you know, the Lord was, the Lord wants Chipotle blessed. Okay, and when you think about, you know, just the small cost of having to bless this group, but how expanded that blessing will become for, for them because they're blessing blessed people. Mm-hmm. They just didn't know. They didn't know Messina. They're just like the chick with the hair. And, you know, and so... So there's that it's piece. Like, are you a party? Like, yes, as a matter of fact. I as am. a matter of fact. But here's the other thing, though, too, that I want you guys to pay attention to is, is you have to act on it. You can't let any codependency come in and keep you from acting on it. So Messina's going to follow up and say, um, they said. And so, mm-hmm. so anyway, you see how that works? And you have to, I feel like you have to really appreciate it, too. Because in the moment, I wasn't really appreciating what he just said to me. Right. I'm still a little frustrated. I'm trying to figure out the timing. I don't, you know, I have one job. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't get here with the food for them on time, and I, you know, I'm close to all of them, and I <coughs> know they could maybe get a little angry sometimes, or <laughs> maybe not be at their full potential, but they're going to play for three hours after that, you know? And I'm just kind of stressing and so I really didn't fully appreciate it for what it was that it was a blessing you know until I got here and kind of settled in and I'm like oh yeah you know they they just said they would give it for free I didn't ask for it I wouldn't have I thought maybe they would give us a discount but um so yeah and it was not cheap so yeah it was a great blessing yeah so you have to pay attention to those things even when they're maybe not of that size but, you know, how is that affecting them, and how is that affecting you? And we were, we were wanting to bless the worship, the worship team. team. Yeah. Because this doesn't happen. This doesn't normally happen for the worship team. They don't usually get fed before events like this. But because we're a blessed people, we want to make sure that we bless. And then guess what happened? Chipotle blessed us to bless them. And you see how it just happens? They were also, Zebulun were also loyal and brave leaders. So I found this interesting because this is the month really where we talk about wealth and the increase and the blessings, you know, basically money-wise. But they were also, um, in Judges 5, Deborah's song records that Zebulun were leaders in the battlefield. And they have been said to be officers and recruiters. Well, they were recruiters because they could convince these people of this, you know, just like they were convincing people and pulling them out out of poverty mindset, you know, I mean, if somebody pulls you out of poverty, you're going to follow them where they go, or are you going to listen to them, are you going to, you know, take their leading, um, it also says that they fought with David with an undivided heart, and there were a couple different times where they talk about them being, um, having an undivided heart so they were loyal and they just there wasn't that that was said about any of these other tribes Mm -hmm. you know there were some that were um you know disobedient in the wilderness and they rebelled in the wilderness and others you know some of the others sold joseph into slavery and zebulun was never never mentioned in any of those cases so you know they're just really faithful in what they're doing and 
And I just thought that goes in line with everything else. Yes. It just looks like a cool list. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> I think so, anyway. Um, <laughs> but so when Rose first told me that I was going to be speaking on this, I, you know, she's talking about finance and she throws this word at me all the time. And, and I'm like, well, I, okay, like I work in, I, I do home loans, if you guys don't know that. So I work in a credit union. So people think automatically that I'm like in banking and I, you know, own this big whatever. But to me, it just is it's my everyday work. And so when she's saying, oh, but this is your, you know, this is your month, you're gonna be speaking on it. Okay, that's fine. I can I can study like anybody else. <laughs> and, you know, and figure things out and have things to talk about. But where's my connection? You know, it talks about them being entrepreneurs because we talked about them like being able to expand their boundaries. And, um, you know, she kept talking about this entrepreneurial spirit. And, and I don't feel like that person. I don't have my own business. I don't have these grand ideas. Even not having my own business, I'm not, you know, sitting at home with, you know, 10 different plans laid out of these new businesses that I'm going to come up with. It's just not, it's just not really my thing. So I thought, how do I even really connect to this? Um, so God just started showing me. I mean, I felt this way in my business. I've, I've been doing something in this real estate world for like 20 years. But I just feel like that's just because I fell into it. You know, I just, I don't have a, I don't have a college degree, you know. And there were even times, and being where I am now, I have been really successful there. And I kind of felt like guilty about it sometimes because I didn't. You know, I know other loan officers that are out there just like beating the streets and just like pounding on realtor stores and trying to get business from them or posting stuff all over social media all the time or um, talking to all of their friends. I mean, just pounding the pavement, being salesmen. And I didn't feel like I was a salesman. And God was like, well, you're not really. You're, you know, you're a relationship builder. And that's what does it. You know, that's exactly what, that what, what gets you where you're going. And it's like basically showing me that this is, he has anointed me in this area. Um, I didn't come from a family with a lot of money, um, a lot of, you know, not a lot of schooling background. And, and in my mind, that was kind of always the thing. You know, you go to school and you get this degree and then you, then you can do all of these great and wonderful things and make all of this money. Just wasn't really my background, but I became a good steward of what he gave me, and he was just showing me that you know you have done good with what I've given you, and so I've given you more. And like I said, it just it felt weird to me sometimes because I've gone back and forth with this confidence. I. I can be overly confident sometimes or be seen as overly confident sometimes, um, which, you know, real talk is just because I'm insecure and I just will put off this <laughs> facade sometimes and it's not really based on anything. Um, aside just trying to hide that side of me. So I, I battle not seeming overly confident in some of these areas because I know that I can be seen that way, and I don't want to be seen as someone who's just full of herself. You know, I want to be full of God. I want people to see Him. And so now I've had these times where I go the other way, and I'm like, you know, like when Rose tells me I'm going to speak on this, and I'm just like, okay, well, but why? Um, which is this, you know, He doesn't want me to be like that either. So, Going through this and studying this and feeling this connection with Zebulun, I feel it. You know, um, they were, you know, like I said in the one, it says, um, rejoice, Zebulun, and you're going out. That was part of the walking it out. Going out. You have to actually go. You have to do. And I've done that. Um, she asked me to do something, I do it. You know, so we make some changes at work, and I do it. And, um and then God was showing me that too, that I've been pretty flexible there and I've really tried to help um, management with some things and growing our, our um, 
department as a whole, and we have. I mean, we went from like the number eight lender to the number three lender, wow. and yeah. out of look at that expansion. I know. Mm. And out of a hundred loan officers or so ish in Wichita, I'm like number four. Wow. Oh my god. And I that's just awesome. found that out like last week. <laughs> Person, yeah, but I also share that information. But anyway, I just thought the timing of it was good because even as I sat there with my boss and he's telling me this and he's so excited, and I wasn't, I didn't get that excited because I thought I'm not supposed to because I'm just supposed to be humble and you know, but. <laughs> Because I just, again, would have this thought of, like, I didn't do anything to get there. Well, like I said, God's just been showing me that I have. You know, I've, um, Sean and I started tithing fairly early on in our marriage, and he didn't really want to. And I wasn't really the, I wasn't the, you know, I wasn't really the churchy girl, like, either. He was, he wanted to come, <clears throat> excuse me, to church and sit in the front row and, like, go to lunch with the pastor. And I'm like, what? <laughs> why can we just go in the back and like kind of mingle in like everybody else does and why do you have to go to the front <laughs> but then I'm like but we should tithe <laughs> I could just ask him weird <laughs> well he wanted to get connected and I feel so bad now because <laughs> you know obviously that's a huge thing but <laughs> <laughs> but I said let's tithe and he was like mm, uh, whatever <laughs> and really he didn't he let me do it because I did the money and he didn't want to have to look at the budget and the bills which is another thing that I, I do I do see now that I do have this um, anointing for that you know putting together budgets getting people's um, finances more in line I mean I, I didn't realize how much I had to do that with my job um, I'm not technically a financial counselor, but you're buying a house, and that's the biggest purchase that you're ever going to make. I mean, and just keep making the next biggest purchase you're ever going to make. And so everything has to be in line. So I have to have those hard, convers hard conversations with people and kind of try and get them back on track if they're not. And so, yeah, that's to me, it's second nature. But that's not because I have some amazing skill that I got going to years of college. It's or, you know, that my parents didn't raise me that way. It's God. I mean, it's just, this is what he gave me. This is what he's, this is what he's doing in me. So, just got to embrace it. That's amazing. Anyway, so that's kind of my story. Oh, but I did have another um, piece of this. So, again, when looking at them as businessmen, and I don't really see myself as a businessman, I kind of struggled with that and coming back and forth because it's not my, anyway. Um, it just didn't, the word didn't connect with me. And, um, but Tina was talking the other night and she was telling about this dream that she had, which she shared a little bit the other night. Um, do you wanna come share or you want me to just give a recap? Okay. So <laughs> basically she said, it was a dream she had a long time ago and she wrote it down in her journal and it came back to her because she was getting the journal out to let uh, Mark use it or something. So she ripped out some pages and she read one of the pages and it was this dream that she had, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, a dream that she had about starting a business and then the business failing and then it coming back up, right? And so she's like, God, what does this mean? You know, what I don't, you know, we've talked about a couple little businessy ideas or some things that we want to do. Um, but she's like, is that it? You know, what are you talking about? And he reminded her of um, Jesus telling didn't you know that I would be about my father's business? Mm -hmm. And that he was showing her that that, I mean, that means something else. What is the father's business? What is the father's business with you? What are you in business with him That's right. to That's do? So and like she was telling me, for her it's worship. And, you know, for me, I think it's a couple of different things. I think there's something in the marketplace. I think there's something with my line of work and the finances. Um, I think there's something with, um, our small group, um, our house. I mean, 
that's another testament that I, we doubled our house payment when we moved into the house that we're in. And, you know, it was like a freak out moment a little bit for Sean because he doesn't do the money and he's like, well, how are we going to, how are we going to double it and be okay? And I just knew that I knew that I knew, of course, I had the finances in line, but I also knew, and being in this house has been, I mean, it sounds so weird at the time. It seems so weird to me. So this is the mindset we have to get out of is thinking, why would God want me to have a house with a pool? Like, isn't that just kind of a little bit much? Like, am I trying to be fancy? Am I trying to, <laughs> you know, like, am I just trying to be showy? But it's not, I mean, it's, yes, we wanted it, but we have had so many more people come to our house and just sit outside and talk to us about their lives or sit in the pool and tell us their woes or, you know, I mean, it just, it's, people come into our house and say how comfortable it feels and we love hosting and again that's another way that we can give you know it's not just the money thing it's not just the cash what else can you give what else can you pull from somebody else we have to do that trade um, because he wants us to do the same thing with him so what else do you have to give we had our time to give we had our house to give we you know have food to give <laughs> you know and I don't know the exact thing that's coming out of it each and every time we have people over, but there, there, you can just feel it. There's something. There's something coming. There's something going on. You know, it's caused us to have a life group, and that's grown and blossomed, and it's just teaching us to be more leaders and, and lovers of people. So, yes, that's um, good. So, that's yeah, good. that's pretty much it. Um, and I'll tell you the story about my first fruits gifts, so it's it's money. Um, but it was just these plastic coins, because I just thought it's the, you know, it just needs to be a symbol. And, you know, a few hours ago, I'm getting ready, and I'm in the shower, and God's like, it has to be real money. Like, it has to feel real to them. No, you guys don't need the dollar that's in there in quarters, but it but it's a symbol of what we've talked about. It's a symbol of this tribe. It's a symbol of the blessings of what he wants to do. And then he also wanted me personally to sow into you because I do have this blessing of the financial peace here. You know, financial peace, like Dave Ramsey, but. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> But so he was like, it needs to, it needs to look real. It needs to feel real. It's in these little bags, so you can clink them around and put more in there. And I've got another bowl of some extras here. You can take more if you want and put it in there. But it, um, it had to feel real and, and seem real. And so I was just excited because I was like, okay, did I really hear him say that? Did he was he really saying that to me? But this is the timing, and you know when he's. This extra little portion of Holy Spirit, this extra anointing of Holy Spirit that we have right now, and listening to that, I was like, okay. So I had to rush around to try and go do this and actually bring in something real for you. So that's kind of where that came from. But I would also encourage you to put in little notes or any other little symbols of things that you're expecting, you know, anything that symbolizes something that you're um, expecting to for provision, for increase in. Put it in the bag and just carry it around with you, clink it around, and just be reminded that he wants to bless you. That's good. That is good. Aww. That is good. Aww. That is good. Aww. Well, that is good. well that, that's really interesting because, um, and you know what, really quick, Bev, do you have any paper, like, um, you know, a piece of paper for everybody, just plain paper? Do you, or just... Okay, that, that would be, yeah, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, so it was really interesting because as you were talking about that, the, you know, the real, it had to be real. Um, I was thinking about the fake, to go ahead and take a fake coin to go along with your real coins because that transformation from, you know, that fake understanding to the real understanding. That the Lord's, you know, transforming our mindset, going from poverty to the real thing, and really the way He, the way He really wants us to be thinking about some things, um, and so 
there is this other, okay, so you know, who, who is Jesus' treasure? Judas. Judas, right? And um, it's real interesting because, um, okay, so did Jesus really need a treasure? No, he really, I mean, you know, he was a, he was a good steward. He stewarded very well. And when you think about Judas, you're like, oh, well, let me ask you this. Did Jesus make a mistake by putting Judas into position? No, because you can't imagine Jesus making a mistake, right? So you think about when, um, wow, did we make a mistake by, you know, or, or when, you, when you're in a management position and you think about, putting somebody into position and you're like, did I make a mistake doing, you know, did the Lord make a mistake by putting you 20 years ago in, you know, no, no, he didn't. But when people screw up because they do, right? We all do. Um, you know, you got to look a little bit deeper into that and just know that Jesus didn't make a mistake by putting Judas in that position. But you know what? People mean way more than money. And, and it's about loving the people and helping them go through a process. Because with Judas, if he didn't have that situation, if he wasn't in position, would he have had the opportunity to screw up like he did? And then would he have been able to see the Lord's love for him? I mean, you know, I mean, think about, you know, things like that. And so um, when you were talking about that, Messina, it was really good when you were talking about how you being in position and the Lord, you know, you're, he, he's showing you, he's, he's unraveling your identity. And, you know, in this book, and like Phil, when you taught last month, you know, talking about all the things that you unpacked as you were going through the study of it <coughs> and just how you really connected with it. And that's it. I mean, the Lord puts us on his calendar, he causes us to, you know, get in this cycle of blessing and learn about each month and how we connect with it so that he can expand us. And, um, and it's amazing, it's amazing the way he does this with us. And you feel bad for those people that don't have a clue about any of this, you know, you're like, why, why don't they know? But, um, but so anyway, I thought that that was really good. And when you were talking about Issachar and Zebulun, um, that's amazing, too, because when you think about being a steward of, you know, what the Lord has given us, and you have, you have money, mm -hmm. and it's just a tool, you know, what was that saying, Shonda, about Jesus just had paper in his pocket? Yeah, he, he, Jesus didn't need any paper in he his pocket. He didn't need any paper in his pocket. Because <laughs> dollar bills are just paper. It's just paper. Well, and they could have gone and, he, and done whatever they wanted. I mean, they could have, they had the money, they they were making the money, they were finding the resources, they could have gone and done whatever they wanted, but they were going back to the word, they were going back to those who, you know, could help them determine where that should go, mm -hmm. which is yeah. so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very important because of, in the stewardship, and we, and that's one of, um, for Rosh, that is one of our core values is, you know, stewardship and integrity um, and stewarding well. And look, you guys, it was such a blessing to me. I mean, Chipotle will be fine. <laughs> but <laughs> but look at how, look at how as you're a good steward over what the Lord gives you, he blesses you back. Yeah. And, and we're supposed to be good stewards and we're supposed to sow into good soil. We know that the worship team is good soil. Awaken Breakthrough, Rosh was going to sow into the worship team. And so, you know, the oh, Chipotle had to sow into us, <laughs> to sow into, so you see how all that trade happened. Okay, so now there's another thing too. Um, so, you know, I've been, I'm taking this class and there's some study, the studies that I've been doing about this. Okay, so the world system, in the world system, you save, mm -hmm. you, you try to, you know, 
okay, when I'm ordering when I'm ordering this for the worship team, if I get this, this, and this, I can save instead of getting this, this, and this. But I can save some money over here. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. You save to save. In the kingdom system, you sow to save. Okay, so like you give your, and I kind of touched on this a little bit on Saturday night. So I have twenty dollars or whatever that I'm gonna that I'm going to. Um, I have ten thousand dollars that I'm going to put in the first fruits offering. Did you see it? I switched it to <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so I have this ten thousand dollars that uh, am I really gonna do this? Am I really gonna do this? Sue, will you flip to the next slide, please? Thank you. So okay, second Corinthians nine, verse eight. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Okay? All right. The source of your blessing is not in your ability. It's in God's. God is not your, or, or, you know, you don't, I mean, yes, we need our job. We need our different things. And those, that's a resource. But God is the source. And he can trade out the resource at any time. And it's just like the tribe of Zebulun, right? They would trade different things. Okay, so, and if you flip to the next slide, please, thank you. Genesis 12, 2, and 3. This is um, one of Awaken Breakthrough's um, uh, core verses. Okay, and this is my life verse. And then the other one, Luke 4, 18, is Shonda's life verse, which is the other verse for Awaken Breakthrough. Okay, so Genesis 12, 2, and 3. Um, look at the blessing of Abraham. God caused him to be blessed with everything he puts his hand to. Okay, so the verse says... You know, it's where Abraham, God's calling him to come out of his father's country, his father's land. They were idol worshipers, so on and so forth. And so, so he was calling Abraham to come out of that land, just like he's calling us to come out of stuff. And then he goes on to say, because I'm going to make you a great nation. Now that make, make. <laughs> okay. The making process, you know, that's a beautiful thing. But I'm going to make you a great nation, and I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. So we want to make sure that we're constantly blessing people, yes. right? Okay, so now you receive the blessing of Abraham through the Holy Spirit. The source of blessing is God. Mix this with you. Because, you know, he needs us in the earth. He has given up control because he's not a controlling God, right? He's not a controlling God. He's given up control, and he's taken some risk on us. And so we're going to hoard? He's giving, he's, he's giving up control, so he's taking a risk on our butts. <laughs> and, and so, therefore, if we, like, take that one talent and bury it, we're not taking any risk. Do you see that? So... Okay, so then mix this with you. He needs us in the earth realm. He's the creator. He created us to create. He needs us. So when people are like, oh, bless God, praise God, it was all God. Yes, but come on. He needs us to do it. He needs us to step out and do something. He needs us to co-labor with him. Okay, so mix this with you. It's not up to you to make things happen, though. I mean, how did you make being number four no. in the room? <laughs> I mean, did you make that happen? Well, I mean, I did my part, but I didn't do it all because I mean, there would be times. So in our in our business, you know, it's going out and getting realtor referrals, and of course, personal referrals. If anyone needs them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a second. So where do you work? Where do you Ameri work? Ameritrust 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 Ameritrust. What address do you work at? I'm 135th in West Maple. Yeah, Come see me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should do commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I just did. <laughs> I should not have worn sleeveless today. Um, but so there are times that I do what I'm supposed to do. Um, I have a sales report that I send in every week that's like I've talked 
to these people and I've done this and that works. I can see that working, but I'll randomly get these calls from a realtor I haven't talked to in months. Oh, so-and-so told me to call you or a realtor who told somebody else to have them call me or a past customer or something like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of just happens that way. So I know that those times are God just showing me. I mean, he doesn't want me to sit back and do nothing because I did that for a season, you know, where it was just coming in and I was just, you know, just going to town. And then I went from top to the bottom. I mean, not, but basically I, I'm always typically at the top of mayor trust um, loan officers, but then I fell. And I mean, that's all anyone can talk about that year was, you know, the fall of 2017. I just, oh. I, it wasn't up to my standards. And it's because I was getting, I was getting too proud. I was, you know, just like. It was the fall in the sun. Uh, yeah. I was just going with it, and then I mean, he humbled me, and so I've just been rebuilding back from that. And now, when these, when I have these times where someone just comes to me like that, that's just kind of out of nowhere, I'm just like, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, it just is His His little blessing to me, even though I'm doing my piece as well. Mm -hmm. That's good. And you know, here's the alignment piece: is because um, I've heard that people, um, you know, they they're um, what am I trying to say? When they talk about home loans, they talk about, oh, it's almost like you get favor when you're going to go through Meritrust. That's true. Um, Shannon just told me that is what happened with him. He said that there were other offers on the table. Shannon went on her buying house. I believe that's not a secret. Oh, it's not now. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. Um, so she <laughs> told me on Saturday that they had in, um, I think, four or five different offers. And yes, they did put their offer in first. Um, he said it wasn't the best offer, but the sellers took it anyway because their lender was Meritrust. Because the people buying their house was with Meritrust. So it's, and, and I also know that there's been a piece of me helping build that name as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, God was showing me that, that it's not just my numbers on the paper every month. It's, you know, what else have I done to support the group, to give my gifts into the group, just like we all do here, giving into this to where, you know, so we can help each other grow. Um, I've done that and I just didn't even think about it like that. You know, my boss would call me and ask me questions. I would just, you know, spitball with them and just, oh, I think we should do this. I think we should do that. And, and it's, he's showing me that that's had an impact. And now our name is very recognizable and Mm -hmm. Well, and it goes back to that alignment. You know, who are you aligning with? Did the Lord call you to align with Meritrust? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it could have been Coors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, but, <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, who, who's the Lord calling you to align with? And, and so with that example, it made me think about Pentecost and how well Pentecost went. Because we all were in alignment and we did our part. And it just, it was just a fabulous thing. Okay, so, um, yeah, thank you. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we have a few minutes left and I want you guys, um, can, you, can you help with the paper? So I want you guys to take a piece of paper and we're going to, um, so while, while Messina is handing that out, I want to read this first question to you. What amount of money will make you forget bit, forget about God? Do we have enough? Think about it. Think about no. You just everybody gets one sheet of paper. Okay. Think about how. Um, just think about it. A hundred dollars, thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. At what point do you feel good enough to where you're like, got this? Don't need God anymore. I mean. Really think about that for a minute. And you know what? I forgot to finish my thought earlier about the $10,000 putting it in the first fruits. If you put the $10,000 in the first fruits, I want you to think about the difference. Compare the difference between your return on your ROI, your return on investment. If you take that $10,000 and you put it into Meritrust. Hey, Messina, what's the interest rate for savings right now? It's probably like point nothing. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. So you take that ten thousand dollars and you're going to put it in the bank and into your savings account. And think about your return on investment. Think about your investment, the, the your your um, interest rate that you're going to get on that ten thousand dollars. Now think about if you put the ten thousand dollars. Okay, you're healed. The Lord's healing. The, the Lord has healed you, or you're in the process of being healed, right? Yeah. Okay. Your mind's being healed. Your stewardship is being healed. Okay? You have this $10,000. The Lord tells you to give it, and you're like, Eek! I want to keep it in the bank. But he says to put it in the offering. Compare the difference in the investment. Or maybe he doesn't tell you to put it in the offering. Maybe he tells you to buy, I want you to buy that piece of land over there. And you're like, oh, what am I going to do with that blank piece of land? It doesn't have anything on it except snakes and weeds. I just want to keep it in savings. Maybe he wants you to spend that $10,000 on, you know, buying a building. Paying off, you know, your kid's college. I don't know. You see where I'm going with this? The world system is, is to keep it in savings and to bury it. Okay. I can tell you guys are all into this here. Okay, so we're going to do the first question. And, and just, just you guys rest in the rest of the stuff. Don't, don't. We're going to start with the first one. On part of your piece of paper. Yep. Part of your piece of paper, I want you to ask yourself question number one. What is the lie that I'm believing about my finances? Because remember, Saturday night, the Lord wanted to call out healing for physical healing and healing for financial healing. Because if we're sick, broke, and poor, we are not a good demonstration. <laughs> Who wants that, really? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay, so your first question is, what is the lie that I'm believing about my finances? So I want you to sit in this for just a second, and I want you to really feel it, and I want you to write it on one half of your piece of paper. Do I? Can I write on a piece of paper? Do I have to write on this blank piece of paper? No, you can write on whatever you want to write on. But write on a clean sheet of paper because we're going to do something with it. Let me just let me just speak a prayer so that the, the Holy Spirit can just kind of unearth. I'm going to read the Luke 14. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the gospel. The gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal a broken heart and to proclaim deliverance to the captives and a new sight to the blind. I want to camp out on that new sight. <coughs> And part of that means where you, you've, you've been cloudy, opaque, and you have not been able to see the thing for what it really is. So Father, right now, I thank you for the anointing that would rip the, rip the veil off of our eyes where we have not been able to see what you want us to see concerning mammon, concerning money, 
where it's been unclean. We thank you that you have seized this moment right now and you are unearthing. We thank you for visible pictures. You're taking us back in time in situations and you're showing us even the mindset, I thank you that you are unraveling it where it's been twisted and bound and not been able to process through. We say that the enemy unties it. We say untie the mind, untie it. Every mind blinder in the name of Jesus, we cast you to the feet of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you that you are releasing purity of mind and purity of thought we're able to comprehend and to see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying concerning the money yes. and the lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we say that the spirit of a lie, that lying spirit mm -hmm. is bound in the name of Jesus. We lose truth over the eye gate mm -hmm. and over the hearing mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus and the heart. We say that the heart shall receive the new. Father, we thank you that lies can no longer stay hidden. They won't be uncomfortable hiding. spoke to me and said, Rose, I need you to break soul ties with money. So we need to break soul ties right now. I want you to take a minute, and I want you to break soul ties with money. It's just like breaking a soul tie with a shovel. Money is just a tool. Break soul ties with that screwdriver. Break soul ties. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? <coughs> money is just a tool. So you need to be breaking soul ties. Let's take a minute. And you guys, repent, ask for forgiveness, and break that soul tie. To bring a little clarity about money, Money is to remain neutral in our hearts. 
And when it's not neutral, it becomes an idol. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So if you find yourself worried about money, well, I need this and I need this. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. When you constantly are thinking about money, that's an unhealthy tie. So, Father, I just thank you that you awaken us to money being neutral. And when it tips the scale, we will be alerted and you will show us that that thing is going the wrong way. And I say we shall seek, seek the kingdom of God first and then all else shall be added to us. Can you guys feel what we're doing here this month? Mm -hmm. We are. We're, we're plowing through some things in the spirit realm because the Lord says, no, I don't want you guys because this is a year of birthing new things. We need that tool to birth some new things. We need to be such a prosperous people that we need to be we need to be prospering to the point to where our needs are taken care of and we have a pool in the backyard. <sighs> Maybe not all of us because I don't want the extra work. We'll just go to Messina's. But, you know, the Lord wants us, right. The Lord wants us to be prosperous, and he wants us to be so prosperous that our needs are taken care of in a really good way so that we're demonstrators to those other people like, wait a minute. But then he also wants us to be so prosperous that we help others in what their call is to, Right? And let me be vulnerable because I went to, me, Messina and I were talking at the bank and we're talking about some stuff and some money. Do you need to come up here with this microphone? Yeah. Yeah. You guys can hear me, can't you? No, real well. <laughs> we're talking about money and just things that I'm trying to do in the future. And it was a large piece of change. And I'm like, the first time I'm like, Lord, because I know God has called me in that, the, that, the arena, that vein, and to, 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 to believe and to walk it out. And I said, dear Lord, that is a lot. But he's called me there. But that whole few, two or three days, I was like, that's a lot of money. You know, this, 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 this. Money, 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 money. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord says you got it wrong you got it wrong seek ye first the kingdom focus on the kingdom and then all else will be at you see it was just money it was just spinning and that's what I'm talking about it needs to get neutral in your heart and you got to ask the Holy Spirit, show me the balance, the beam of balance, because he'll, he'll show you that scale where it's tipping. So I had to repent and get that thing cleaned up and break the soul tie, what Rose was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It, and there's a process. Hopefully you guys can tell that Shonda and I are, like, full on in some processes. Yes. Mm -hmm. 2019, Passover, you know. Counting the Omer, Pentecost. There's still, there's, we're, yeah. Because you know what? It's labor. It's labor pains trying to birth a new thing. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you said something that reminded me of something that I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's go. Well, you guys, can you feel it? We're doing something. And this isn't going to stop. It just, we got our salvation. We're learning how good God is. Think about the Israelites. Came out of Egypt. Blood on the doorpost. It was redeemed by Jesus going to the cross. We got our salvation. We got the upgraded version. We walk it out like Messina was talking about. We're going through the wilderness just like the Israelites did. And they had to learn about God's ways and who he was for them. 
And that's what we were doing. That's what we've been doing. And now we get to this month, and he's like, yeah, now you guys need some provision. You guys need some provision to go do what I'm calling you to do. I'm calling you to go into the promised land, and you're going to need some provision to do it because you guys are a prosperous people, and, and I want to birth these things out of you. Okay. So the second thing, ask the Holy Spirit, what is the truth you want me to know about my finances? Some of you guys need to take a snapshot of that, power, that slide. And we could probably post it too. Because you want to have to carry this around for a minute. while you guys are finishing writing up because we're going to do something with this I was just um, you know God has an amazing incentive plan you know bonus structure like like your roll top desk Bill right there's a trade that happened there because the Lord wanted Phil wanted a roll top desk and the Lord wanted him to have it but he was waiting for the right time, waiting for the right time, waiting for that person to release it and for Phil to be there to pick it up. And the interesting thing about that, too, is, is that, you know, like, say, for instance, if, you know, the Lord is like, um, you know, Rose, I want you to or, or let's just say for Phil, let's just use the roll top desk example. Phil wants this roll top desk and the Lord wants to give it to him. But let's say that Phil lives um, with his, I don't know, let's say he lives with his daughter or something and, his, and there's no room in the house for this roll top desk. Or he's living, let's say he lives in a tent. <laughs> there's no place for this roll top desk. So the Lord's got to heal him first so that he can steward the roll top desk. So he's over here, Lord, I want this roll top desk. Sorry, Phil. I'm totally using you here. <laughs> but he wants this roll top desk. And, and the Lord's like, I want you to have it too. But there's some things that we need to work through so that you can steward it. Because we are supposed to be stewards on this earth. And if we don't steward things properly, then we feel like, yeah, I mean, it eats away at who we are. And so for the Lord to give us what he's wanting to give us, we've got to have a heart, you know, change in some areas. So search your heart and get an understanding of like, okay, Lord, if I, if I'm, because one time I was believing for 20,000, the Lord was like, come on, Rose. And I was like, what? Can you at least, let's start by you timesing that by five. And I was like, eh. but you know, I mean, uh, there's some things that I have to work through to be able to steward that. Hundred thousand, a hundred, one zero zero with a K after it. You know that I have to learn how to steward that. Because what if I were to get that, and then 
Um, I spend it on shoes. <laughs> really? Is that really right? Is that really stewarding God's provision properly? So, and it's not just about money. It's, it could be about health. It could be about relationships. It could be, I mean, you see what I'm saying? We're talking about money tonight, the tool of money, which is easy, but you think about how it affects in other areas too. So, okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. The official breaking of the soul tie, you all at the same time, I'm going to count to three, all at the same time you're going to rip that piece of paper in half. And I want you to hear the sound of this. <laughs> the, so, so I want you to hear the sound of this ripping because it's a sound that's going up to heaven of a tangible example of what you are doing. Think about it before I count to three. Think about what you're doing. Think about the sound that it's creating and how that sound is going to heaven. And what is that sound? What is that sound a container of? Right? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, my. That was awesome. Do it again. That was, yeah, do you do it again? Listen to that, you guys. Yes, you're shredding up unbelief, <coughs> doubt, unbelief, worry, because you know what? God is your source. God is the source. Yes. yes. And then there's confetti. And then there's confetti. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that is so awesome. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay, so, um, Messina, will you come close us in prayer? Thank you.